Hello, today we're going to look at covalent substances. In fact, we're going to look at giant covalent structures and the properties of those. But before we do that, just let's just remind ourselves of the different covalent substances that we have to know about. The first one is uh, small molecules, so covalent substances that make up small molecules. And we've done a video on that already. You'll remember hydrogen, chlorine, water, and those kinds of substances. We also have giant structures, giant covalent structures that we're going to look at today. And we also have polymers, which is the topic for another video. So as we said, today we're going to look at giant structures. Let's just do that to highlight what it is we're looking at. So covalent substances, today we're looking at giant structures. We're going to start off with the first one, and that is graphite. So graphite is a giant covalent structure, sometimes called a macromolecule. And here is an example of how the atoms are arranged in graphite. So you can see there's two layers there. That's supposed to be two layers. It's supposed to be a kind of 3D picture, but I haven't managed to possibly get that too perfect. But I hope you can understand we've got two layers and all the atoms in graphite are carbon atoms. So all those black uh, balls or black circles, black shapes, black circles, are all carbon atoms. Okay, now the first thing is that each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms. So if you take any one of those carbon atoms in the middle there, not the ones on the edges, you'll see they're bonded to three other carbon atoms, and those bonds are covalent bonds. And because they're covalent bonds, that means that graphite has a high melting point. And the reason why it has a high melting point is because we have covalent bonds and those covalent bonds are strong and therefore a lot of energy is needed to break apart those carbon atoms simply because the covalent bonds are strong bonds. Okay, so that's the first feature and the reason for that feature. The second one is that the carbon atoms are arranged in layers of hexagonal rings. So if you look at just one of those hexagons there, perhaps that one there, you can see six carbon atoms arranged in a hexagon. And all of those carbons, except for the ones on the edge, are in hexagons. They are arranged in layers. And between the layers, there are weak forces of attraction holding those layers together. That means the layers can slide. So in red there, you can see the forces of attraction between the layers. And those are weak. They are not anywhere near as strong as the covalent bonds that hold the atoms together. So there's weak force of attraction holding the layers and therefore the layers can slide, and that means that graphite is actually quite a soft substance, and it's quite a slippery substance. It's soft and slippery, and often used, because of that, as what we call a lubricant. It's also used in pencils. So when you draw a line in pencil, you're actually making a line of graphite on your piece of paper, and that's because the layers of graphite slide off the end of the pencil there. Remember, pencils are not actually made of lead and just as a little note there we've said this already but just to make a note we said that graphite can be used as a lubricant okay and then the last point here is that there are free electrons in other words delocalized now that's underlined as a spell check thing but actually i checked it is spelled correctly there are free electrons or delocalized electrons which can move through the structure that means that carbon not carbon, graphite, can actually conduct electricity. It's pretty much the only solid non-metal that can conduct electricity. And it's for that reason there. Okay, so these are the features of graphite, and it's probably important just to make a note that everything that we write in red, everything that's written in red, this is what we call a property or a feature of graphite. And everything that's written in black is the reason for that property. So if we said why is graphite soft and slippery, that's the property, and it's because there are the graphite is made in layers, and there's weak layer, weak forces of attraction between the layers, and that's how we can um, use the red and the and the black there to help us explain. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at is diamond, and diamond. You may have seen, but there's one in the corner there. Here is an example of, uh, well, just a picture of diamond there. You can see it. But if we were able to look into it and look at the atoms and how they were arranged, you would see them arranged a little something like that. 
in the diagram there on the right hand side and you should be able to recognize this structure as diamond now the first thing is that each carbon is covalently bonded to four others in graphite each was bonded to three others in this case it's four others so you can see there these are the carbon atoms in that structure of diamond interesting to note that it's just the arrangement of carbon atoms that can make two very different substances diamond or graphite worth doing a little recap here carbon has four electrons in the outermost shell that means it's going to be found in group four which it is and it can make because of those four electrons it can make up to four covalent bonds with other substances in this case we're just talking about carbon can it but it can be other atoms as well which we we'll look at in future videos so each carbon is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms and that means that diamond is one very hard because of the way it's uh, bonded the atoms of carbon are bonded together but also just like graphite it has a very high melting point and again if you had to explain why diamond has a high melting point it's the same reason as before as we said for the graphite a lot of energy is required to break the carbon atoms apart because they are held together by covalent bonds and those covalent bonds are strong it's probably actually worth mentioning also that there are many of those covalent bonds in diamond every single carbon is held together to another carbon with a covalent bond uh, worth mentioning also that the carbon atoms are in a giant lattice structure and this also contributes to the reason why diamond is so hard so if you're talking about why diamond is hard we've got each carbon covalently bonded to four others and it's in a giant lattice structure or the carbons are in a giant lattice structure there are no free electrons in diamond each of the electrons in the outer shell is used to make a covalent bond with another carbon so there's no free electrons therefore diamond cannot conduct electricity there's no free electrons to move around so it cannot conduct electricity and that's opposite to what graphite so graphite can diamond cannot okay so the next one we're looking at is the last one that's silicon dioxide that's another giant covalent structure there's a little picture of it there in the bottom left and again if we were to look at the atoms you would see them arranged something like this those gray circles or spheres are silicon and each one is bonded to oxygen the one on the edge there is bonded to two but in fact if you look at the ones in the middle they are all bonded to four other atoms in fact of oxygen so here we've got each silicon is covalently bonded to four other atoms and if you look at the ones in the center as we said or the, in fact the second from the top silicon there you can see it's bonded to four other oxygen atoms and that's going to mean again we've got high melting point for silicon dioxide and again a lot of energy is required to break apart those bonds we've, we've written it a couple of times before so i won't write it again um, but because of this high melting point one of the uses of silicon dioxide is to make bricks for kilns or furnaces a kiln is like a furnace that's used to heat perhaps clay or other substances it has a giant lattice structure just like diamond does as you can see on the right hand side there and also again just like diamond there are no free electrons and if there are no free electrons it cannot conduct electricity no free electrons no conduction of electricity okay so those are the details of the three giant covalent structures you need to know about it's probably worth giving ourselves a quick little test just to see if we know the features of each one so for this next slide all we need to do is to put a tick where it's yes and across where it's no so here we go tick or across so for diamond high melting point yes conducts electricity no soft no covalent structure yes for graphite again high melting point yes doesn't does conduct electricity is soft and is a covalent structure for silicon dioxide it has a high melting point it does not conduct electricity is not soft and is a covalent structure so as you can see they all have high melting points they're obviously all giant covalent structures and the middle two there you can decide depending on which structure you're looking at okay so that's a summary of diamond graphite and silicon dioxide all giant covalent structures thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon